Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the third video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we installed Active Directory and we promoted that server to a domain controller. In this particular video, we will be talking about domain name system or DNS. We will discuss what is DNS resolution process. We will talk about different types of DNS records and how to create those DNS records. If we go by definition, domain name system or DNS provides computer name to IP address mapping name resolution services to the users and computers. When an Active Directory operation is performed, for example, authentication, updating or searching a resource, computers use DNS to locate Active Directory domain controllers. Even domain controllers use DNS to locate other domain controllers within your domain. DNS is a server role that you can install by using server manager or using Windows PowerShell commands. If you're installing a new Active Directory forest, DNS is automatically installed in the first domain controller of the forest. Now let's consider a few examples and let's understand the working of DNS in detail. When a user logs in from the client machine, the request is sent to the primary DNS server. This request is a service location request. Client asks DNS server, do you know where I can find the domain controller? In this request, client specifically looks for Kerberos service. Kerberos is an authentication protocol for Active Directory. DNS server has service location record or SRV record for all the domain controllers within that domain. So DNS finds that record and it sends that record back to the client. Now client knows the IP address of the domain controller. So client will forward the authentication request directly to the domain controller and the authentication process begins. If this request fails, user will not be able to log in. Even you will not be able to join a machine with the domain if DNS server is not available. If you want to find a service within the Active Directory domain, DNS server should be reachable. DNS resolution process involves converting a host name to an IP address. If a user on client machine tries to access a website, for example, www.google.com, First, computer will check its local cache. If this client has connected to google.com before, then this local cache will contain name to IP resolution address. If this address doesn't exist in local cache, the client will check the local host file. This host file exists on every machine and it can be accessed from C drive, Windows, System32, drivers, etc, host. The host file is a static version of DNS. When DNS was not introduced, administrators used to add static entries within host file. But this is not feasible to add static entries in host file when you have thousands of machines in your organization. So the host file has name to IP address typed in that file. If the entry is not in local cache and host file, then client will not be able to resolve this name. So client will do a recursive query to local DNS server. Recursive query means the client will ask DNS server to resolve the name on its behalf by any means necessary. Even if you have to contact other DNS servers to resolve this name, please do. I just need to resolve this name. This is called recursive query. DNS server will first identify that the name client is trying to access is a local name or this is a remote name. If client is trying to access a file server or a local application, in that case, DNS server will already have records for these names. But if client is trying to access a remote application or an external website, in that case, DNS server will not have the records for that application then DNS server will check its own local cache. If this DNS server had resolved this name before, it will have an entry for that request saved within the cache. 
Let's say earlier a different user tried to access google.com. So this DNS server will have that record saved in its cache. So in that case, DNS will send the resolution back to the client. And if DNS server doesn't has anything in its cache, then it will send an iterative query to the root name server of the internet. Iterative query is a type of DNS query in which a name server contacts a second name server to perform a name to IP lookup. Root server holds all the domain suffixes. For example, .com, .in, .org or .net. Root server doesn't hold the domain names. So it will redirect DNS server to top level domain server that holds all the domain names. Then DNS server will query the top level domain server. Top level domain server will have a record for the domain and it will have the IP address of the domain that DNS server is looking for. Then response will be sent to the DNS server with the IP address of the website. Local DNS will save this record in its local cache for the future reference and will send this response to the client with the IP address of the website that user is trying to access. Let's try to ping google.com from command prompt. So what this request will do, a name resolution process will be performed on www.google.com. Before I access this website, this has to be resolved to an IP address. Now here you can see this website name is resolved to an IP address. So that means this resolution process is passed and I can access www.google.com website. This computer will temporarily store this record in local cache. If you want to check local DNS cache on a machine, for that you can run ipconfig display DNS. This command will show you the local DNS of a particular machine. Here you can see the website that we pinged from command prompt. This is the A record for google.com and this is the IP address where this website is pointed to. Time to live value is it defines till what time this record will be in cache. This value is in seconds. If I run this command again, you will see this value will decrease. It shows 219 seconds now. If I run this command again, now it shows 208. So for next 208 seconds, this value, this record will remain in local DNS. So if I will try to ping this website, so this record will be taken from the local cache of this machine. After 208 seconds, this value will be removed from local DNS. If I'll try to access google.com again, then that request will go to DNS server. If you want to remove these values, if you want to clear the cache, you can run ipconfig flush DNS. This will remove all the cached records or the entries from the local machine. Now, if I will try to access www.google.com, this machine will not be able to resolve this name from its local cache. So now this computer will check the host file. If you want to check the host file, for that, we will go to C drive. Windows. System 32. Drivers. ETC and this is the host file. Right click on the file and click on open with and open this file with notepad. So this is the host file and you can find this file on every machine. In this file, you can create static entries. For example, if I'll create static entry for google.com and let's save this file. Let's go to command prompt and let's ping www.google.com. Now you can see this website is resolving to 1.2.3.4. 
So I have created a static entry here in host file. So that is the reason this machine is picking up the records from the host file. If I remove this and let me save this file, let's try to ping same website again. Now you can see this is pointing to the actual IP address of the google.com. Now let's understand the different types of DNS records and how to create those records. A record is used to map a fully qualified domain name or FQDN of a server to an IPv4 address. In this example, my domain name is office365concepts.com. So if I have created an A record with name mail and I'm pointing this to an IPv4 address, so that means this A record is created for mail.office365concepts.com and this is pointed to the IP address of the server who is hosting mail.office365concepts.com. Now let me show you practically how to create DNS records. We will go to server manager, tools, and then DNS. This will open DNS manager. You can access DNS manager from Windows as well. You can simply type DNS and then click DNS. This will open DNS manager. From here, you will go to forward lookup zone, then click on the domain of your local active directory. First, let's create a record. Right click and then click new host. Here you can type the name of the service, for example, mail and this will automatically take it as mail.office365concepts.com. Now you will have to point this service to an IP address. For example, 1.2.3.4. Click add host and this will create a record. Now let's check this record if this is going to be resolved or not. For that, we will type NSLOOKUP set q equal a and then type the name of the service that is mail.office365concepts.com press enter and here you can see this service is resolving to 1.2.3.4 apart from a record we have quad a record you can also denote it as four times a or double a double a we call it quad a record this is similar to a record, but the difference is a record is used to point a service to IPv4 address and quad a is used to point a service to IPv6 address. Process is same. You can type the service name and here you can type IPv6 IP address and then click done. CNAME record or canonical name record is used to specify when a domain is an alias of another domain or if you have subdomains. CNAME record never points to an IP address. In this example, I have one domain office365concepts.com and I have two subdomains site1.office365concepts.com and site2.office365concepts.com. So I'm using CNAME record to add and point both subdomains to office365concepts.com domain. In Office 365, CNAME record is used for auto discover. And in on-premise as well, you use CNAME record for auto discover service. To create CNAME record in local DNS server, you will right click and then you will click new alias or CNAME. Here you will type the name of the service, we are going to create a record for auto discover. This will automatically take it as auto discover dot office 365 concepts.com. And here you will type the FQDN of the server that is hosting this service. Do not worry about these records for now when we will be configuring exchange server. I will show you step by step how to create all the DNS records for exchange services. For this example, I'm going to point autodiscover.office365concepts.com to mail.office365concepts.com. So what will happen if any request will come to autodiscover.office365concepts.com? 
that request will be redirected to mail.office365concepts.com. So to create the record, you can click OK. Now let's go to command prompt and let's do NS lookup. This time we will perform NS lookup for CNAME record. It's set Q echo CNAME and we will check auto discover dot office 365 concepts.com and here we can see this service is pointing to mail dot office 365 concepts.com txt record is used to prove ownership of a domain we can use txt record for spf as well let me show you how to create txt record on global dns you can go to dns management of your domain Click on add. And from here you will select TXT. Under name you will type at which denotes the actual domain name. And here you can type any value. For example, good luck. And select the TTL value and then click add record. So this record is added. Now let's check this DNS record. Let's check this from MX Toolbox. You can perform NS lookup as well, or you can use MX Toolbox as well. MX Toolbox is a tool from where you can check the DNS records of any domain. If you want to check DNS records for your uh, particular domain, or let's say you want to check TXT record, for that you will type TXT colon and then your domain name. So here you can see this txt record has been updated ns record or name server record indicates which dns server is authoritative to a domain or in other words it tells the internet where to go and find the domain's ip address name server record also tells that which domain provider is hosting the dns records for a particular domain if you want to check name server or ns record for your domain Go to DNS management for that particular domain and here you can see the NS record. You will not be able to modify or delete these records, but if you want to point these records, the name server records to a different domain provider, you can click on change next to the name servers. From here, either you can select the domain provider or you can enter the name server values manually. And once you will change the name server to a different domain provider, that means now that domain provider is responsible to manage the DNS records for your domain. MX record is used to indicate that which email server is responsible to accept the emails from the external world. We can add multiple MX records with a preference value. The lower the value, highest will be the priority. In this example, we have created two MX records and we are pointing both records to the same server's IP address that is responsible to receive external emails. If a server has lower preference set, then sender's email server will send that email to this server. And if both records have the same value, then sender's server will pick a random server and it will route the email to any one of these two servers. SRV record or service record is used to identify the computers or the servers that host specific services. SRV record has few components like domain name that indicates for which domain you are creating this record. Service that is the type of the service that you are pointing to a server. Protocol is the name of the protocol that is being used by the service. Priority and weight is the priority and the relative weight of the target host. Lower value means more preferred. And host name is the FQDN of the server who is hosting the service. If you want to check SRV records within DNS manager, you can go to TCP. Here you can see four SRV records. Those are already created. These SRV records are created for different, different applications, different services. If you will double click on any record, it will show you the components and the values 
for that particular record. If you want to create new SRV record, you can right click, then click other new records. From this list, we will look for service location. Double click on this and then fill in all the details. For example, let's create a record for mail service. Let's assume protocol will be used by this service is 80. Let's assign priority and weight. And let's say port will be used 25. And then we will type the domain name who is hosting this particular service. For example, office365concepts.com and then click OK. So this is how you can create SRV record. In the next video, we will be talking about architecture of Exchange Server. So that is all for now. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.